Well, thank you very much for this generous inter introduction. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for being present here today. And as you might have already noticed, what I'm going to talk about is the name I thought that it defined me. So basically, first of all, let me introduce you this name in question. My name is Inkril Inktitik. So can you guys tell anything from this name, just my, hearing my name? Can you guys tell anything? Mongolian? Mongolian? <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> well, that's fine, that's fine. Um, the reason why I asked you this question is because when I was a child, I used to feel like this name told everything about me, as if this person deep inside me didn't really matter anymore. And that's why as a young child, I felt really vulnerable to be actually judged by this name. And I tried to avoid introducing my full name or actually talking about it with people. But today, as the topic is showing up, I decided to be brave and show up here in a room full of people to actually talk about my own name. So thank you very much for having me here again. And I guess you guys must be wondering what's with this name anyway. This is just one of those long, uh, you know, hard to pronounce foreign names. But let me explain you why I felt this way. It's very simple. Because I'm a Mongolian and in Mongolia, people use their father's name as their last names. So basically, your name's supposed to be like, your name, this girl or this guy is the daughter or son of that guy. But in my case, it was different because I didn't have a father. So instead, I used my mother's name as my last name. So my name is Inkrel, which is my name, and Inktitik is my mother's name. So as a whole, it says Inkril, the daughter of a woman, her mother, Inktitik. Well, although I didn't really face uh, many kind of discriminations except for some mean childish remarks, this difference really mattered to me when I was growing up during this period when I really wanted to belong and blend in, when I wanted to be like the rest. So what did I do? Well, funnily enough, since I was a child, I made up a bunch of really cool names for my imaginary dad and shared it with my friends. But as I've grown older, and especially since I've come here in Korea, uh, when this name didn't really matter anymore, I started to question why did I feel like this name was such a big constraint to me? Was I worse off because of this name? Or what was behind this name anyway? Well, of course it's my mother's name, but what did she represent? What does this name mean to me? So whenever I ask this question, I recall this one day back in my high school years when I had a debate on a very controversial topic, the right to abortion. So my opponent guy said that, well, abortion was necessary to prevent the births of future Hitlers and criminals and other outcasts of society. And he pointed out that the majority of these people, these criminals, were actually born out of broken families and single mothers. Single mothers, <laughs> yeah. So, well, I was really shocked because according to his definition, I was one of those, you know, perspective Hitlers. I might even become Hitler, you know? <laughs> so, do you guys think I was raised to become a Hitler. 
No? Thank you. <laughs> so, well, if you really want to answer this question correctly, you'll have to look at my past experiences of being a daughter of a single mother. So, let's rewind to the decade that I was born in. In 1990s, uh, this period was a very tumultuous period uh, for in the history of Mongolia. Mongolia has a long, long history, but this period was special because Mongolia was a socialist country uh, with a very close ties with Soviet Union. So when the Soviet bloc fell apart, Mongolia also had to transition into democracy and free market economy peacefully. peacefully. Well, it sounds wonderful because Mongolia actually transitioned into democracy without shedding a single drop of blood. What's, what can be better, right? But actually, when we talk about this period, what actually comes into mind in Mongolian people is the suffering, the actual struggle of that period. Because a large number of state enterprises went bankrupt during that period and many people were left unemployed and struggling at the outset of this new, wonderful, democratic era. So they did everything they could do to meet the um, to make the ends meet, but the thing is, this was such a hard period for Mongolians. And during this painful period, I was born. So how was I raised up? Well, my mother was one of those people who unluckily lost her job during this transition period. So, but on the other hand, she was one of those born fighters who didn't really want to give up so quickly. So she actually taught herself English and went to take a course about a tour guide. I don't know why she took that course, but she actually explored every possible avenues to find herself new opportunities. And I guess because of that effort, she find, found herself a job. And she for, worked really hard for our family. And she actually helped others to get back on their feet. And while she was busy doing all this, I was growing up by myself. So back to that debate date. What do you guys think was my response to that Hitler comment? <laughs> I grew up by myself, but anyways. Unfortunately, it wasn't me, but another girl in our team who actually responded, the pointed out that he was wrong. Uh, strangely enough, she was also uh, raised by a single mother, and she also used her name as her last name. And she said she was proud of this. Hardworking mother, a mother who tried to do everything she could to fulfill both parents' roles to make her daughter feel included. She said this made her a better person. And I understood what she was talking about because I was also, I, I also had that kind of mother. So in hindsight, I think my mother helped me immensely by shaping up my values and perspectives on life. Well, then you might ask, how was she able to help you when she wasn't really there for you? But the thing is, I think many of you have heard about this before, but there is this thing called the law of reverse efforts. It's when you try to sink, you actually float. And when you really try to hold your breath, you lose it. 
So the thing is, she didn't really try to teach me who I had to be. But on the other hand, I learned that by watching the examples she showed me, the sacrifices she made for me. So from those experiences, I learned that she cared about me. And in turn, I also learned to care about her too. And my, actually, in my, my actions to show her that I cared about her was, well, to think about it now, it was such a minor things. But whenever I think about those experiences, I feel proud of myself. Well, this minor heroic acts of mine were things such as well, saving my candies for her or trying to read her books to actually uh, impress her, to make her feel proud. So in a way, I was striving to be a better person for her. So I think this is the biggest asset I gained as a child. And that's why I really thank my mother for this experience. Currently, there are actually thousands of uh, female-headed households in Mongolia. And from this stage today, I really want to thank those women for showing up, embracing their responsibilities, to be, uh, for being able to face all of those challenges and struggles by themselves. I'm sure their children will also learn some important lessons to be better global citizens in the future, to contribute to our common future. And to conclude, well, I'm not here to say that broken families or single mothers bring out the best in children. But as you guys all know, this world we're living in doesn't always foster the best happiest experiences and some of us are actually some of us must face a less privileged face but on the, on the other hand if you can be brave enough if you can really face these challenges these struggles can lead us to brighter futures and better opportunities as well so I want to I, I want to thank my mother for all this experience and this is the end of my speech. Thank you very much.